Hey, I'm the Kathlong Gamer. Welcome back to Gladiator Manager. It's episode 15. We enter our first cup match of the year, and unlike last season where we were up against a side many divisions ahead of us, this year we get Turicum, who we went up against last season. They're sixth in Division 5 right now. Absolutely winnable. They do have a couple decent fighters to choose from, maybe three. Uh, I am not taking chances. I really want to get that first win. No reason risking it on a 1v1. So we're going to go into this with Elia. It's her 29th career match. She's only lost one. Let's see what she can do here. They did not bring their top fighter. So has a chance to... Uh, well, the lead part's not going to matter. We just need to win this. Oh, 136 to torso and that's it. Two moves and they yield. We finally have ourselves a project worth hanging on to. Howard Frateroli here is two and a half, five star potential. Not too bad already and can definitely get better. We've signed him to that 52 week contract, only 82 a week, so not very expensive. It was only a little over 100 to sign them on. And yeah, pretty impressive. So recovery, of course, is one of their best, and that's not the most useful of stats, but it, they've got some work to do. Uh, but happy to have them, uh, happy to use a spot on somebody that actually can hit you know, a five-star kind of level because we've got plenty of these two-and-a-half or three stars. Teddy, ooh, Teddy's dropped to one-and-a-half now. So we need to get Teddy out of here as soon as possible. He's agile and nothing else. Our next league match against Pistoria, they're in the lower end of the table, but they did have three to four pretty decent fighters to choose from. I think they ended up picking just about the weakest of those four, though, to go into this fight. It is a gladiator, so no advantage to either of us. I, I wanted to bring Adnamesha, who's fresh from her injury, into this, but I didn't want to risk it because a couple of those would have been pretty close. I think she would have had the advantage, but with that lack of skill, she drops her weapons so often it could have gotten ugly. And so we're going to put Elia in and just take care of business. Right as we've gone to head into our second battle against Nysis, also the one that's going to wrap up our second round against all of the teams with the opportunity to go 18-0 and in those at the halfway point of the season. The good news for us is that Nysis is coming off of a loss. Penrod went into that fight. He is that top fighter. We beat him. It's only He's only had two losses. We beat him. And now he just lost another fight, another 1v1, against the fourth place side last time out and is now unavailable. Looks like their other top fighter, Emma DeHurley, unavailable. Plancina is okay, but really the initiative is all that she really has. Kiefer is a decent fighter. There's the good one to watch out for. Initiative, bravery, toughness, all plus 50, and everything else. Minimums of 25 in the discipline. So Thurza, if they bring Thurza into the fight, they're going to be difficult. Also, Katula. So they do have three or four options. So they can still commit to this fight and maybe pull off some kind of victory, which means we need to come into this fight guns blazing because this is our only <laughs> challenger for winning the league this season. So no mess it about, Elia, Adnamesha. Let's see if we can get the job done. Absolutely brought those best two to this fight, so it's not going to be easy. None of the four have an advantage over the others. Tula retreating to the corner. That's okay, I suppose. Katula is just running about trying to uh, delay the fight a little bit. Animesha doing what she does best. 
She's a heck of a fighter, but she gets disarmed so incredibly easy. Uh, for the first time, I've actually focused her training on weapon skills. So far, it has not paid off. Uh, Elia, though, meanwhile, is uh, getting a clear advantage against Catula, who's really just busy running back and forth in circles. Slight scratch for Adamasia, but she does recover her weapon. Let's go ahead and try to parry for something different. Uh, Catula is angry now, and already morale is low. We've done some damage to the head. Why don't we keep that up a little longer? Finally, Elia locks Catula in. Heavy damage to Elia's right leg on that one. That did not go well. First check on damage. Animatia losing some blood. Catula has already lost blood and morale. Uh, energy down a bit for Thurza, but otherwise things are still looking good for us. both trading blows with their opponents, and we've come out on the better end. We're inflicting more damage than we're receiving, but we still very much have a fight on our hands at this point. No absolute advantage to anyone, though I'd say Catula is probably the closest to going down right now, but that could very much turn quickly. Low morale, lower energy, more blood loss. You see Adnimatia's not doing great either, though, but Thurza energy running one uh, is running quite low and that's that's got to start turning into an advantage here at some point animatia gets control better by landing blows than she does by uh, defending she has not defended well at all and I think that's the first real miss that Elia's had where Kato has been able to dodge either one in control at the moment not looking good on that front Not sure what happened here. Adnimatia hasn't had but a scratch for a long time, and she lost five blood and is now a little bit dazed. Severed index finger, is that new? I thought that was from before. Uh, we might need to be a little more aggressive here before Elia finds herself fighting alone. Okay, the blood loss is slowing, but it's certainly not looking good. Nice blow there to Catula, which I'm very surprised Catula is still in this thing. Her morale is so low. And Elia has landed so many hits. Morale is at one. One on the morale. Minus six to the blood. I think all we need is one more hit, so we'll just go for it. There we go. First one's out. Animatia cannot afford to uh, take too many more blows here, but there we go. Animation no longer dazed. Also 30 damage, 37 damage in all. Animatia, oh come on, falls unconscious. Thought the bleeding might have stopped, it doesn't. Nysus puts up a real battle here. Now Thurza was in a lot worse shape than Elia. Energy is down to 49%, her morale. Their morale actually is really similar, so is their blood count. So, other than energy, uh, there's nothing here. Also, neither one with an advantage head-to-head. -head. 17 to the torso. Oh, we've got this slender advantage. We want to try to push that. 24 right leg. 24 left foot. Okay. Keep it balanced there. 50 to the head, nice. It's gotta start be playing in our favor. Mor How is morale similar? Elliot has only been hit once and on that same maneuver inflicted the exact same amount of damage, but is three for three where has only been hit once in three, yet has less blood, less morale. Oof. Not looking good, Elia. Not looking good on that front. 
I'm not going to do this often, but I'll try this once here. We've already inflicted some head damage. Can we land a blow? No. Oof, two misses in a row. Four twenty-four to the torso. Just had an achievement that said to the death. I'm so confused. I am so confused. We just landed what should be a killing blow, yet she has no injuries, no armor, still has 95% blood, 48%. Her morale went up. Her morale went up. And yet she just took 424 damage to the torso. Meanwhile, Elia takes light damage and is panicked and has no morale and is losing blood. I'm so confused how her morale went from very good to rock bottom when she nearly killed. I, I don't know how she didn't kill based on that. Um, they're fallen. They're down. We're panicked. <sighs> um, okay. Come on, Elia. <laughs> and, and we lost. We lost. I don't understand that. I do not understand that. How she is unhurt from that. How that was anything but a winning blow. And how we took 10% and yielded. 10% of the damage in comparison. Well, that makes things interesting as we hit the halfway point. We went from just about putting the league away for this year, potentially to things just got interesting things really just got interesting from that we still have the two kill advantage and we still have a one win advantage after nisus fell in that previous fight how we lost that i i don't know adnamasia falls unconscious bleeding out from a scratch elia beats the snot out of her opponent takes a minor wound and yields our next fight Cordoba fourth place in the league pretty good side they have depth but their best fighter is out injured so are my two best myself uh, but even with that that next group they have a wide array, array of options but they're not great they brought two pretty decent fighters into this one uh, but their third one, very weak selection here. And our weaker selection uh, that would have struggled a little bit compared to the likes of either of these. You know, would have been on similar footing. Domitia should have no problems with Augustine. And so Corrado and Servia should have their way, especially Corrado uh, with, with this Barbarian. No advantages to any side. Let's go ahead and get to the fight. <laughs> For 3-0, that was a pretty tight contest, but we do come out on top, everybody unhurt. Uh, that is the last fight for Demisha. She has served her terms uh, of the slavery and earned her freedom, so she will be moving on. We will not be retaining her. In another surprise, Nisus has taken a second loss. So their win against us was sandwiched either side by losses. They dropped a 16-3, so somehow we've survived that simple fact that we 
we did take a loss to Nisus. That direct loss, that direct win for them, really closing that gap. But that lead's been reestablished. Now 46-8 and eight on the season. Looking pretty dang good. The long-term effects are very minimal. We've lucked out a little bit. Where we were so unlucky in that fight, we've lucked out a little bit surrounding that period. And I think we're going to be just fine. So into the second half of the season, approaching our 20th match. Uh, we're still in the cup. I have no idea who our next opponent is there, but uh, find out eventually. Things are good. Things are good. We've we've had uh, one new fighter added to the team, added to the roster that we like, uh, and we've been able to get rid of one who we didn't like so much. So, uh, step in the right direction, right? Domisha was a two and a half star. Now we have a two and a half five. With some development, with some time, they should be decent. They'll be decent. Uh, we'll see about what we want to do with others because there's still like some options <laughs> on what we need to do with some of these fighters. Uh, I, I think we're a little too large. I'd, I'd like to get rid of a couple more, but we'll see. That does it for this episode, though. I'm the Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.